Hello, thank you for tuning in to today's tutorial. As you may remember, I made a commercial a few days ago, a crunchy commercial, which you can find here. If you haven't watched it, I suggest you watch it before you watch this video and then you come back to this video. But if you do remember that commercial, I am here today to show you how I edited that commercial. This is going to be a quite detailed breakdown. I'm going to go into every clip of the commercial and I'm going to show you what kind of effects I apply and what kind of animations I applied and all that good stuff. So if you are interested in that, let's fire up Adobe Premiere and follow along. So here is my timeline. And for those who don't remember or haven't watched my latest commercial, I'm just going to play it right now so you can see what we're working with. And that was it. I think it turned out pretty nice. So let's start with clip number one, which is the zoom in on the potato bag of chips. To begin with, I actually filmed this sequence and I moved my phone forward. But then I decided I wanted a still image. So basically it's just a still image from a movie clip. So that is the raw file I was working with. So this clip is not too complicated. We have a simple fade in transition. So we go from dark to bright. And then we have a simple zoom in. So we go from 69 scale all the way to almost 100. If we go into the motion effects for the clip, we can see that I have a scale animation. And this scale animation, I have animated it with these bars here. It actually zooms out just a few frames. See, zoom out, and then it gradually zooms in. And then you can see this slope. This slope kind of gradually goes down. So it begins slow and then it kind of pulls you in. That was at least the effect I was going for. So it even starts with a zoom out and then it starts slow and then faster, faster, faster. I also added a rotation. And the rotation have the same velocity, 4.7. Just a little bit of rotation. And then if we keep going to the effects, uh, of course I have a color grade. As you can see, the image is kind of cold. So I increased the temperature a lot for this color grade to get this warm feeling because that was what I was going for. Basically, those are all the effects I have on this clip. And there is one more part to this clip, and that is the adjustment layer. I kind of felt like this image lacked a little bit of depth. Uh, it looked kind of flat to me. So in a way to save the situation, I should have probably taken a better shot. But to save the situation, uh, I added cinematics bars, just a crop ratio, 10% above and 10% under. And here you can see that the bag of ships kind of goes over these bars. And what I did is I just put a simple mask on the cinematic bars. So the cinematic bars are just adjustments layers. Uh, so this is the bar under. So as you can see, it is just a simple crop of 10% from the bottom. And if we start here, you can see that it starts at zero or almost zero. So you can see that the cinematic bar starts at zero. And then if we go forward, keyframes, you can see that it's increasing here. 2%, 3%, 4, 5, 6. And finally, here we have 10%, which will be the maximum cinematic ratio feel. So right here, uh, where the cinematic bars kind of start to touch the bag, I made a mask. And basically this mask just removes this uh, adjustment layer. I'm just going to hide the bag of chips for now, so it's easier for you to see. So as you can see here, right when it, the bag of chips start to hit the cinematic bar, so as you can see, the mask is increasing. That's all I did. I did the exact same thing on the top cinematic bar as well. And because this goes so fast, you don't really need to be very exact. I mean, if you look at this, you can see that I haven't been super thorough. I should probably have spent a little bit more time on this now that I'm looking back. But yeah, it goes so fast that you 
usually don't notice this. But this is <laughs> this is kind of sloppy work. I can see that right now. It's kind of sloppy work. But yeah, the feather is just on two, and the mask opacity is 100%. And I just keyframed the mask to to work with the bag of ships. So let's move on to clip number two. So this clip, of course, it has a color grade with the temperature at 74. One thing I did was, for some reason, the background became very blue, even with the lots and the temperature all the way to 74, the background still looks quite blue. And on the other scenes, it looks gray. I think it was because my girlfriend was standing over here. My girlfriend was cutting the potato and she had to stand up to get the power to press down the knife. And then she kind of casted a shadow onto the backdrop, which meant it became very blue. So what I did is I keyed out the blue. I basically used the effect called Ultra Key. And then I just, uh, you can use this color sampler tool. And then I just chose this uh, spot here. You can see blue and more, this is more like gray. So if you have some color imbalance in your photo, you can key it out. Uh, just make sure that you choose zero for your transparency. And because if you increase the transparency, it removes the color. And now it just desaturates the color. If I go to 100, the background is visible. Uh, but by reducing the transparency to zero, you don't lose anything, you just lose the color. So that is what I did for this scene. Okay, let's move on to the next clip. This clip is also in 10% of its original speed. Uh, I have color graded it as well. A great advantage by using these cinematic crop ratios is that you get a little bit of extra space to work with. Uh, because I wanted to center the spoon, I have put it all the way over here. And if I didn't have these black cinematic bars, I wouldn't have had enough footage. So by adding these cinematic bars, you kind of get a little bit more stuff to work with. As you can see, oh, I have pushed it to the limit, almost to the limit, yeah. I couldn't have gone any higher. But yeah, that's a great advantage. So, so yeah, there are a few perks to using cinematic bars. Let's move on to the next scene, which is me opening the bag. And this one is a little bit more complicated. This sequence consists of three shots. We have the masked out opening of the bag, which I did in Adobe After Effects, which basically looks like this. And all everything that's black is transparent. So this is the normal spoon clip, but right here, I have split the spoon clip into two parts, one top part and one bottom part. So if we look at the bottom part and we remove the mask, I basically just duplicated the layer and masked the top part and then I masked the bottom part. Uh, and what I did with these two is that I keyframed it to actually split. So the bottom part, it goes down. So you can see I keyframed it to go down. And the top part, I keyframed that part to go up. And while I keyframed it to go up, the mask is also changing. I keyframed the pa mask path to be in sync with the opening of the bag. So let's look at the mask path. And I will go forward. And as you can see, as the bag is opening and taking more and more of the space in the screen, the mask moves with it. And for the bottom part, and for the bottom part, I did the exact same thing. So it moves down and the mask always stays within this bag. And everything together looks like this. Bag opens, bag opens.
Right here I split the opening of the bag into another clip and that is just because with the camera movement I kind of stopped zooming in and I didn't want to randomly stop so here I just added a simple scale in so it continues to scale in. So let's move on to the next scene. This scene has almost the same keyframes as the first clip. There's a simple scale in, zoom in to kind of like follow the ships falling. And then we have a simple rotation of, let's see, eight degrees. Yeah, eight degrees. So a simple rotation and a simple zoom in. Let's move on to the next clip. This clip already has movement in the camera. I have added all the sound effects, which I recorded after. And I just tried to time the sound effects. As you can see, if you extend these boxes in Adobe Premiere, you can see kind of when the sound starts. So it starts on this keyframe. That's, so I just try to time it for when the ships is hitting the other ships. Uh, it also has a lot and it also has a key where I removed some of the blue because we were standing in front of the backdrop and we kind of cast a shadow. As you can see, there's a shadow here as well, which I don't think should be there. Uh, but yeah. So I keyed out some blue and I put a lot on it. And there's no movement or anything. It is just 10% uh, speed like... It's just 10% speed like almost all the other clips. And here for the final animation, I made two animations in Adobe After Effects. Basically it is almost the same animation. It's just that one is uh, a little bit bigger and the other one is a little bit smaller. And they are a bit randomized, so they don't look exactly the same. So let's look at the smaller one first. It looks like that, pretty nice. And the big one looks like this. And the big one is also faster than the smaller one. Together they look like this. So they end almost the exact same time, but the smaller circle starts a little bit before. And that was because I wanted people to see the background for as long as possible. Uh, so when the small circle starts, you can still see a little bit of the ships, which I think is a nice touch. So the bag of ships is just a simple PNG transparent image, and it has a small animation to it. It basically starts at zero scale, and the scale in goes very fast in the beginning. As, as you can see, the velocity here is kind of like this mountain, which means that it goes very fast here and then it kind of slows down so we get this uh, smooth in and fast fast and then smooth out and it's very important to time it with the animation uh, so they end in almost the exact same time so as you can see the animation ends here and here is where the bag of ships animation scaling and ends as well and then when it had ended it had a small scale down just a very smooth scale down. This time I animated the rotation and the rotation is timed with the scaling. So the fastest rotation is almost right where the fastest scale in is. As you can see, the velocity for rotation is minus 69, very fast. And the scaling as well is very fast here. So they're quite similar. So here it kind of rotates quite quickly. And here the rotation slows down. And then we have a small rotation which ends here together with the scale. When this animation ends is also when I decided to put the sound of me eating the ships as well. I thought it would be kind of like a nice finish punch. Like it ends here. Kind of like when the potato chip falls to the ground, I take a bite or something. I thought it looked nice. Let's look at the ladders. So I wanted the ladders to come out from behind the bag of ships. So I wanted to make sure that they kind of like popped out together with that. I animated the ladders as well. I started from behind. I started here where I wanted them to end. And then I keyframed them to end 
over here. So both the position starts here very fast. This is animated as well. So it starts very fast here and then it goes slower, slower, slower. And then it kind of slows down over here. The scale in is very fast as you can see here. The scale is very fast right here. So here is where it scales up the most. And then it just kind of slows down. And we have a rotation as well to add a little bit of movement, a rotation, quite a lot of rotation actually. Uh, another thing that is important with this is the directional blur. If you don't add a motion blur, it, it kind of looks a little bit wonky. Let's look at it without the motion blur. I mean, it works, but I, I just think it works much better with the motion blur. So I keyframe the blur length, which is basically the amount of blur. And so here it is quite big, the motion blur. And then here it kind of stops out. So we go from 81 in blur and we go to 67 and then we go down to zero. So no motion blur. And I did the exact same thing for the other piece of the slogan. So yeah, the motion blur is quite important to have. And I have all these layers above the cinematic ratio so that we kind of overpower the black bars. As you can see, the animation starts above the cinematic bar. Yes, that looks pretty clean. I am quite happy with the design. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope I have been to some help to some of you. I have gotten so much from the YouTube community. I watch tutorials daily of a lot of people. So I wanted to give something back. My version might not be the quickest or the best or whatever, but it is the only version I can give you. So I'm just gonna give you versions of my way of doing film. And if you're interested in that type of content, subscribe, like, you know what to do. And I will see you next time. Take care.